Hello snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host Avrin Lefebvre and in this video we're gonna do a deep dive into Amazon goggles. The main goal with this video is to show you guys what lens quality is, frame quality, as well as UV protection, optical purity, and optical clarity, and whether these brands actually support snowboarding or they don't. So hopefully you're gonna understand what we're doing here and that there's a whole process in this video that's just gonna show you how obsolete most of these friggin' goggles are. Basically, this is your goggle clinic from me, your internet local shop guy, to you, the end consumer. We're gonna break down in this video why you shouldn't be buying this stuff, why you need to stop listening to snowboard influencers. One of the things we're gonna do is cut some lenses and frames in half and show you how cheap the plastic is, as well as dive into how the lenses are glued together, the actual construction of them, and everything in between. Ballistics test? Yeah, we're doing that as well. So hold tight because this stuff is going to get real in depth. Two things you should know about when you're buying goggles is the rake and the wrap. This refers to the vertical and horizontal axis of a goggle. So the wrap refers to the horizontal axis of the lens. So basically from side to side, and that's going to help with your peripheral vision, while the rake refers to the top to bottom or the vertical, which is actually the more strenuous eye activity that you put on yourself. Your eye is flexing that muscle inside it about a hundred times a second, just to make sure that it's counterbalancing what it's seeing through the lens. So if you have a more distorted or optically impure lens, the harder that's working, the more fatigue that's actually going to cause on the eye one of the things to note about any goggle is there's going to be some level of distortion. You cannot 100% remedy it, but you can get pretty damn close. Distortion is not good. It does affect your overall riding performance. It does overall affect you during the day in there. So you want to find a goggle that really just takes out those imperfections and is more optically pure. Something that really just hones in with the natural shape of your eye, the contour of it, and gets them all working together so that you can actually get the best performance out of yourself and your equipment. So with that said, you have to understand that there are multiple levels of distortion. Like obviously the worse quality a lens is, the more distortion you're gonna get. So think about when you're in flat light conditions and everything's starting to swirl and you're in deep pow and you start looking around and you can't find anything to kind of hone in on to be a focal point and you start to get a little delirious and you start to get the spins and stuff. This is gonna be more prevalent than with something that's more optically pure, something that really lets you just hone in on what you're looking at. Now, some of you might be saying, I've never experienced this. Well, you've probably never experienced real good pow either. You know who I'm talking about. Jimmy, fuck out. We're gonna play with some lasers. So hopefully uh, you guys are cool with that. Unfortunately, I do not have a dual laser system to actually show how this pulls the focal points apart and puts stress on the eyes. But I can still show you guys what's going on with a laser through the lens. One of the other things that Rake actually provides is impact protection. With that downward curvature, it's keeping anything that could hit the eye from going in it and glancing back off and blowing out. Basically, it helps protect you from stick branches, snow, fat little skier kids with poles trying to poke you in the face. When you look at a lens that's just straight flat, it's not gonna have as much protection as something that's spherical, obviously. An interesting fact to know about snowboard goggles is there's really no safety standard to a point with them. They have to just meet the very basic minimum requirements to work on your face. There is one more axis we actually need to talk about for goggles and that's the z-axis or lens taper the thing to know about taper is that it is the actual thickness of the lens now any spherical lens 
definitely has taper out towards the edge, but when you're talking about overall lens taper, you're talking about how that impacts right through the main focal point of the lens, like where you're really straightforward looking right through. And it plays a huge role in what you're able to see and how your perception on snow is affected. So what this is, is a taper that helps match up to the natural curvature and thickness of the eye. That way it dissipates distortion and it amplifies optical quality. It helps get rid of impurity. So you have your X, Y, Z, as they call it at Oakley, or you have your wrap, your rake, and your taper. And your taper is what gives a more premium optical quality. None of these goggles from Amazon have any of this. They cannot afford this technology, they can't license this technology, and they make shit too cheaply to have any of this technology. A lot of the other big brands, while they can't say that they have it due to copyright and trademarks, they have something similar in there. They work with it, they have a more optically pure lens than something that is just a crap ass stamped and sprayed lens. You guys need to know about this, especially those of you that have had LASIK or PRK or have eye issues. This is something that really affects your depth perception as well as your overall on snow perception. Let's talk about lenses. The first thing you should know is don't ever buy anything with a single pane lens, like these piles of shit here that some company reached out for me to do a review on and I said send me and this showed up. This is garbage, it's gonna fog up, so fuck that. That shit's straight garbage. What you really need to know about is the difference between stamped lenses or injected lenses. Stamped lenses are basically like a giant cookie cutter and there's this stamp that just comes down and cuts it out and cuts it out and cuts it out and cuts it out. Whereas an injected lens, it's extruded into the actual shape. So the actual optical quality and the protection that you want for your eyes is built into the actual lens. It's one of those added perks. It's a higher quality lens. Stamped lenses are straight frigging garbage. You can spot them a mile away. They're just like boom, 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 boom. There's nothing special to them. This is a stamped lens. Nothing to it. Straight fucking garbage. I mean, as you can tell, the BB fucking just punctured a hole straight through the lens. There's your internal, as you can see, it cracked when I shot it. And that's, that's your external lens. That is just a very thin layer of polycarbonate in there. It's, there's just nothing to these things. And here's your humor. I'm gonna get the BB out right now. This ought to show you how this lens was put together. So they actually utilize a higher end lens frame technology. So it's got an exoskeleton in it. The glue, very minuscule amount. You can see that it's actually not glued perfectly in there. It doesn't follow the seams. Cheap, cheap, cheap polycarbonate lens. When you look at the lens and peel it apart, it's pretty much the same lens on a lot of other ones. Right there is where the BB went through. So you can see it actually went complete. It went through the frame. That's the funny thing is it actually hit the internal of the frame and went through and then hit the GoPro. But cheap polycarbonate, I mean, there's really not much more to say about it. I mean, there's all your glue that they use to adhere this with. Now here's the yellow lens. This is actually an even shittier lens than that one. This thing started to crack when I was cutting it and which tells me that it's a different polycarbonate but it's still not that good. Here's the funny thing about this. If you actually look up close, you can see all the glue in there and how bad 
These are actually glued together. When the light catches them right, you can just see it in there. So these things are just super, Outdoor super Master cheap. Peter. This lens is actually built with its optical quality. You can see when you look at it that it is a better made lens. It does have more quality to it. It's one of those things that you look at it and you're like, wow, I guess I'm paying more, but I'm getting a better product. These did the best on the ballistics test. This, which is to be expected because they're Oakley. Thicker in the middle, tapers out to being thinner out at the edge. It's that XYZ axis. You can see the internal frame that Oakley actually makes for their lens here. I'm gonna peel this apart and look at this thing. So you got foam in there to help seal it, not just plastic and glue. So you've got a little bit more to allow for breathability to help get, you know, so they don't fog in there. These are literally the best fucking lenses out of everything that I just showed you guys. You can see on the internal lens that it actually shattered. These things are over 10 years old. I wasn't expecting them to actually do as well with the ballistic test, but I mean, God. Those lenses are still holding up in there. There's two types of ways that lenses take their shape. There's cylindrical and spherical. Cylindrical, they are pressed around an actual cylinder and that gives them the curvature so that it goes over your face. Whereas a spherical lens is pressed over a sphere and gives it more of a 3D shape. So you've got that rake and that wrap so it bends up and down as well as side to side. This more naturally matches the contour of your eye shape, and this allows for a more premium optical quality. Basically, it's better for you. So let's talk about the ABCs of ultraviolet light. There's UVA, which is the most dangerous. There's UVB, which you still want some protection from. And then there's UVC, which really doesn't do shit to you. UVA is the one you gotta worry about, and that's actually what goggles are trying to protect your eyes from. This is one of those things that goes along with optical purity and optical quality. Basically, if it's letting it all in, it's like just riding around with nothing protecting your face at all. So you obviously want something that's going to hinder that, but not hinder your depth perception, your field of view, and the actual depth of field that you're looking through. You want something that's going to give you that optical quality while shielding that ultraviolet A light. That's the stuff that causes degeneration in your eyes. And just so you know, the eyes are the only muscle in your body that you cannot strength train. You cannot build up. They will naturally deteriorate over time. Everyone's level of deterioration is different. Mine deteriorated and I actually got eye surgery so that I could see again. So I take this very seriously and this is why I don't risk using a lesser product to protect my eyes. Maybe you're willing to do it, I don't know, but this is why I choose to do it. And this all goes back to something else with goggles called VLT, which is visible light transmission, which is the amount of light that actually makes it through the lens. Ventilation is actually a really big component of how your goggles function on there. And if they have shitty ass ventilation, you're gonna get them fogging up. You're gonna get that layer of moisture in there. It's not gonna work. With a higher end goggle, they've actually tried to design it around proper airflow with fit on the face, utilizing new materials that are not available to these smaller shit brands. So what you're getting with a shit brand is shittier foam. Like this foam really has nothing to it. It's so easy to just separate from the frame. Shittier design, something that's just not optimally creating airflow. It's a lens with foam glued to it. And I know some of you will be like, well, mine never fog. They have a fog coating. Yeah, they fucking sprayed a spray on fog coating. It's the same thing as that UV. They dipped them in a UV coating or they sprayed it on. They actually didn't try to build a lens that creates an anti-fog layer in with it, but you could go buy a shitty fucking spray on anti-fog coating and put it on any goggle you want. You could put it on a piece of plexiglass, put two straps through it and put it on your face and go out there and it would do the same. So why are we seeing such a rise in shit goggles inside snowboarding? It's pretty easy. 
Every reputable brand, when they switch factories, leaves their molds there, and those factories want to utilize those molds to make more money. So they go and they put an offer up on places like Alibaba.com or Alibaba Express or any of those like direct to factory marketed businesses out there. And that's it. Like a couple thousand dollars, you could make 10,000 pairs of goggles realistically. It, it, the cost, when you start to break it down when you're buying it, by hundreds to thousands of units, it just keeps dropping. So these people go and do it. So you see people that are like, hey, let's go start a goggle company. The barrier to entry to own an optic company has just disintegrated with the globalization of our economy. And so these companies are actually out there and able to sell to someone that has an idea. And next thing you know, you get 10 goggles that are exactly the same. And the only thing different is the stitching on the strap. Now you add to that the fact that you can warehouse your goods with Amazon and then they'll just ship it when someone orders right there. You're, you're just taking the middleman out and it's this whole way of just tightening up the supply chain so that people can just order it directly and do it. And let's be honest, Amazon's the largest retail space in the world. So people will utilize it and get all these dumb reviews from people that fucking snowboard what three days a year so they're not snowboarders they're people that snowboard oh this is great pay 25 bucks it's the fucking best and if they break i don't feel bad about it well i i agree with little timmy and Susie and jimbo and becky ray and all them and then this is something that i've encountered working on youtube is you get brands that reach out to you and they want you to do a promoted video where you endorse their product well some of these guys are hungry and they'll sell their soul for a couple hundred bucks or for some free product. Me, I have a going rate of $10,000 anytime any company asks me because it just cuts through all the bullshit. You want me to promote Outdoor Master? $10,000. Are you gonna do it? No, you're gonna go to someone like Jonathan Buckhouse and pay him 500 bucks or whatever it was and give him free goggles for the rest of his life and he'll we be sponsored. It's worse that whole than it was when we first bullshit entered it. Because you have people that are not experts pretending to be experts because they built a following. There's nothing wrong with building a following, but you're not a fucking expert. You don't know your ass from a hole in the ground. And it makes people like me super fucking angry, which I'm the angry snowboarder. I'm allowed to be. So fuck them. Fuck all you fucking influencers that took a paycheck and pushed this shit product on people and tried to say, oh, these $30 goggles are as good as a $300 pair of goggles. They're not. Long term, you're hurting your eyes. And all you're doing is selling snowboarding short. These brands do not support snowboarding in the slightest. They're not giving you anything that actually is a performance boost to you and your riding. In fact, they're causing your eyes to deteriorate faster. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to go through eye surgery again. And for those of you that haven't been on it, if you don't need it, why would you want it? It's utter fucking bullshit. And these goggles, like, when you realize like someone slaps their name on the markup when they're buying them in bulk is fucking astronomical. These things have somewhere between 100 to 300% margin when they're mass produced shit. That's why you should actually support brands that invest in the technology, that invest in snowboarding, that invest in our culture. And I shouldn't have to do this video. You're gonna tell me that every one of those shit knockoff goggles has as much technology as these dragons? or these Oakley lenses right here. But hey, I could spend $25 and get some bullshit like this and whoopty fucking do. So really what you need to do is not believe these fucking stupid ass influencers that are just taking a fucking paycheck for the sake of it. But they gave me a couple hundred dollars to tell people like you that don't know anything about goggles that you should buy them. Or reading these dumbass reviews on Amazon from dumbass people that aren't snowboarders. Oh, but I saw an Outdoor Master fucking ad in Snowboarder Magazine. Yeah, I'm sure you fucking did. You wanna know why? They have a quota that they have to reach so they're selling ads. The US Navy also fucking advertises with them. You gonna go sign up and be a seaman? No, you're not. So fuck all these people that are just over here trying to push this shit product because it's an ego stroke for them or they're making a 4% commission. They're not doing anything to fucking help you in the slightest. They're actually impeding you. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be used like that. So here we are. 
$200 worth of destroyed Amazon goggles, and safely I can say that they're crap. They're straight, utter crap. Yeah, it's better than a goggle maybe was 30 years ago, but it's still not gonna be the best thing out there. You're just buying cheap shit on top of the fact that they don't support snowboarding. They might support a freaking shysty con artist grifter grif snowboarder. The fact that I had to buy this many goggles and make a video like this to explain to you guys why you don't want this shit shouldn't happen. At the end of the day, none of these goggles stood out as being impressive to me. Anything that I bought from Amazon was crap. The only goggle that really did stand out to me was Drop. And I figured they knew what they were doing when they got into it. And if you actually look at the quality of their stuff, and it's still not high end. They're a mid-range goggle. That's it. That's all they are is a mid-range goggle. It'll get the job done. It's not the best. It's not the worst. But it is leaps and bounds above like a Copaz or an Outdoor Master or a Zionor. Those are all just shit ass companies. Optically, they're inferior. Material wise, they're inferior. And culturally, they're inferior. So if you really do want to support snowboarding, look to your Oakleys, your Anons, your Smiths, Von Zippers, Dragons, Spies, brands that actually invest in real technology. Brands that want to give back to snowboarding. Brands that sponsor real snowboarders. And I get that people are like, oh, well, I scratch my goggles and shit. You know what? These Oakleys, the lens was at the end of its lifespan. So I had no problem killing it. I paid $150 for these goggles. And I rode them 150 days. That's a dollar a day for the best optical quality you can get. I don't know what to tell you. But when you're paying $25 for a goggle and it really doesn't offer you anything, yeah, okay, you're paying pennies on the dollar a day to use it, but it's not a good quality product. And I can't stress that enough. So hopefully this video really informed you. It really just did a deep dive on why this stuff is shit. Yes, I understand goggles are a racket and they shouldn't be that pricey. Well, you know, you can always buy a last year's, usually on discount or a two-year-old on super discount. If you know where to look and you're actually willing to hunt for it, you'll find goggles that are severely discounted. All right, so did you finally learn what's going on with your goggles? Good. That means you're intelligent and you're paying attention. If you didn't, there's no hope for you. You're frying your retinas and you're probably going to go blind, which means less people in the lift line. So continue to do that. Anyways, if you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos I've got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really want to support us so we can do more cool projects like this, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. You're still here? God, get out of here. Shoo, I'm gonna throw this shit away. Seriously, the video's over, go home. Go away, I'll see you in another one.